There's nothing I love more than a good Planet of the Apes movie. Ever since I was a kid, I've just loved this series. And in my opinion, there are no truly bad Planet of the Apes movies. Even the Tim Burton one is, you know, kind of good and there's some interesting things about it, right? So, I was pretty excited to go see West Ball's Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, which is 20th Century Studios' big attempt to relaunch one of their most iconic franchises. And boy, oh boy, do they need a hit because they're owned by Disney now, and some of the movies that have been out have been, ooh, pretty bad. So, will the apes be able to save the day? Let's take a look, shall we? Generations after the death of ape leader Caesar... Us humans, well, we've continued to fall down the evolutionary ladder, with apes taking their place. Noah, played by Owen Teague, who you may remember from The Stand and It, is a young chimpanzee whose peace-loving village is attacked by an ape army led by the evil wannabe monarch Proximus Caesar, who's played by Kevin Durand. Vowing to rescue his kin, he sets off on a journey across the new wasteland of Earth, where he encounters a human girl, played by Freya Allen, of The Witcher, who becomes his tentative ally. So it was never going to be easy following up the pretty damn good Apes trilogy 20th Century Fox put out a little while back. Many forget, though, that director Matt Reeves, who was elevated to the A-list thanks to his work on those films, actually directed the second and third films of the trilogy, with Rupert Wyatt directing the first film, which wasn't quite the epic the other two were. In fact, I go on to say that Rise of the Planet of the Apes was kind of a shaky start to what ended up being a really amazing trilogy. So as such, I went into West Ball's Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, willing to cut the former Maze Runner director a little bit of slack. Happily, Ball ended up making a pretty damn good apes movie on his own, even if it's not quite the masterpiece some of those breathless early reactions teased. In my opinion, there's never actually been, as I said, a bad Planet of the Apes movie, as the premise is just so interesting. Kingdom tries to act as a bit of a bridge between the Caesar trilogy and the original Ape series from the 60s and 70s. They use some of the same iconic shots and locations, and the score by John Pisano nods at Jerry Goldsmith's classic soundtrack for the original in a pretty pleasing way. The first half of Kingdom is actually great. It does a nice job setting up where the ape world is in terms of evolution, with them now fully vocal, even if they still speak slightly haltingly, still using the sign language from the last trilogy to communicate at times. The ape world is fractured, and the movie starts to depict how, in a fashion, the apes were united, and the evolutionary hierarchy that evolved between them and the humans was established. If you've watched the Planet of the Apes movies from the 60s and 70s, you'll know that gorillas, chimpanzees, and orangutans all kind of hold a different space in terms of their place in society in the apes films. And this starts to gradually examine that aspect, but not as much as I wanted. The CGI is pretty incredible, with the apes looking superb, Owen Teague's Noah is a lower-key hero than Andy Serkis' Caesar was, but by design. He's a gentle figure who becomes hardened as the film goes on, paving the way for what could be an interesting trilogy that may show how his rule eventually helps shape their society in an altogether positive way. The entire Apes cast is pitch perfect, especially the Orville's Peter Mason, who you may recognize as Bordis from that great show that not enough of you are watching, in my opinion. So in this one, he voices Raka, a wise orangutan, and boy, does he steal every scene. He's got to have one of the best voices in Hollywood. Sir, I wish to request a leave of absence. For what reason? I have laid an egg. Kevin Durand makes for a surprisingly sympathetic villain, with him looking to unite his species against what he sees as a greater threat, even if he does so in a tyrannical way. So it all sounds pretty good, right? As long as the movie focuses on those damn dirty apes, it is. Where Kingdom of Planet of the Apes starts to fall flat is when too much emphasis is placed on the humans, especially Freya Allen's May, and then a character played by William H. Macy, who comes in later in the film. There's nothing wrong with either of their performances, but the dynamic between Freya Allen's May and Noah was done very similarly and to much greater effect, in my opinion, in both Rise of the Planet of the Apes and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Even worse, seeds are planted that suggest future films in the franchise will basically just be a remake of War of the Planet of the Apes with future conflicts between humans and apes being what they're building towards. I mean, do we really need that? We already got three movies that were all about that, and the conclusion of War of the Planet of the Apes was kind of the last words, right? I mean, the humans lost. We don't need to see it played over and over and over again. Most of this movie teases a world where humans have completely slid down the evolutionary change, which is really interesting. But suddenly they seem to pull back on that really intriguing idea, and the movie turns into too much of a clone of the other films. That's a shame because this movie is really effective when it was doing its own thing for the first half. 
But even if I was disappointed with how Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes plays out in its second half, I still had a pretty good time with it. Half the movie is excellent, making it a worthy addition to the franchise, even if the direction the follow-up movies are heading in is a little too familiar for my taste. As far as the series go, I'd say it's about on par with Rise of the Planet of the Apes, but better than Tim Burton's remake and some of the weaker entries in the classic Apes series, such as Battle for the Planet of the Apes and Beneath the Planet of the Apes. But it's definitely not as good as the Matt Reeves movies or some of those really classic ones from the 60s and 70s, particularly the first Planet of the Apes and the absolutely amazing Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. Hey, if you like this, make sure to check back on Joe Blow this weekend because I'm going to put out my entire comprehensive and exhaustive ranking of the entire Ape series from worst to best. So check it out. Till then, I give this a 7 on 10. Kind of falls in the middle for me, but eh, it's not bad. Could have been better though. I think it's fair to call this hostile territory. 